Okay, so now just to continue our discussion on the Lofotrochozoa, let's first, of course, establish the fact that we start with our ancestral protist. Step one, our last universal common ancestor. We are looking at organisms with true tissue and organs, so we're looking at eumetazoa. We are within eumetazoa looking at those that have bilateral symmetry, so we're looking at bilateria. And within bilateria, we are looking at those that develop their mouth first, so protostomia as well, we're going to be writing down. So we're looking at protostomia. And of the protostomia, we are looking specifically at lofo trochozoa, and this is now lofo trochozoa part two. And of lofo trocha part two, we're going to be focusing ourselves on one huge phylum of the lofo trochozoans known as phylum mollusca. That's our focus on this video, the mollusks. So, what is phylum mollusca? What does it consist of? Well, just to give us an idea of what things make up, what animals make up phylum mollusca, very familiar to us actually. Things like snails, uh, slugs, oysters, uh, what else do I have here? Clams, squid, octopi, clams, squid, octopi, a whole slew of organisms. Um, that most people are quite familiar with, okay, so we're not talking about platyhelminthes anymore, we're talking about mollusks, and these are snails, slugs, oysters, clams, squid, and octopi. Uh, what do these all have in common? What do all mollusca have in common, essentially, is the fact that they have a soft body, but that soft body is mostly covered by a dorsal, mostly covered by what is known as a dorsal, calcium carbonate CaCO3 shell. So what I would remember is that all mollusca have a soft body and that soft body is covered by this calcium carbonate shell. One major characteristic that all mollusca have, good thing to start off with. Now, another major thing to understand about mollusca is their tissue structure, specifically embryonic tissue structure and how it relates to their future, let's say, development. First and foremost, these guys are all coelomates. So they have this true cavity. The coelomates are specifically going to be with three main parts to remember. And you need to know all three parts. And so these three main parts will be within everybody who is a mollusk of this phylum. So let's go through them. The three main parts are, number one, something known as a very muscular foot. So I'll put that in quotes for right now because it's not what you think when you think of foot. So what does this consist of really? Sometimes this foot region, that's the technical term, uh, you might m be more familiar with it if you think of octopus or squid as the tentacles. And that's what it is because sometimes it's modified into tentacles just so that you have a better idea of what a foot is. Sometimes modified into tentacles, not all the time, but sometimes. So you have a better idea of what this really means, this muscular foot. So tentacles full of muscle, able to do a lot of complex things. Same things can be said for the snails, slugs, and oysters, just different forms of this foot, but it's always going to be very muscular. Number two, number two out of three is that they all contain something known as a visceral, visceral mass. So what does that mean? A visceral mass is going to be a structure of these phyla, of this of these mollusca that contains internal organs. That's all. A visceral mass contains all of the organism's internal organs. And this is the first time we say this word, organs. That's of course true because we are looking at true tissue, true tissue, um, true organ uh, organisms. Okay. So that checks out. It contains our internal organs here. That's usually just referred to as the viscera. And we as humans have a viscera. We have an area in which we have our internal organs stored. But here it's called the visceral mass. And specifically, what you need to remember about this visceral mass is that it contains all these high-value organs, lots of evolutionary work, lots of maintenance necessary for these organs. So it's important to remember that you actually want to protect them. And they're actually covered by something known as a mantle. So remember this term, covered by mantle. This is a thin sheet of tissue. So this mantle region of the mollusca uh, has a thin sheet of tissue that surrounds it. 
and specifically this will eventually develop into the fact that there are glands within the mantle that secrete something very important for mollusca they secrete right there the calcium carbonate shell doesn't just come out of thin air but specifically glands of the mantle will secrete that CaCO3 shell so these tissues function in secreting calcium carbonate. These tissues have glands, and those glands will secrete calcium carbonate, all encompassed within this structure known as the mantle that is protecting the internal organs that are known as a visceral mass. Finally, number three out of the three would be the radula, R-A-D-U-L-A, -A, and this is actually going to be the a belt of teeth in mouth, so let's write this down, belt of teeth in mouth. This is going to be useful in scraping up food. So we scrape up food with this. So think of how a snail or a slug will get food. They have to scrape it up off of the surface that they're on, and that's going to be utilizing their radula. And then last thing to remember about the radula is that it's actually not found in one of the uh, organisms that we'll study, not in bivalves. It's just a, a caveat of this, that not everything is going to fit into a perfect basket. This is one of those examples. This is not in bivalves, and this is important to remember because there's always some sort of question that asks and sees if you remember that radula, though is one of the three main parts, it's not found in bivalves. Okay? So some people even consider this three or four main parts because there's the mantle region as well. Um, uh, either or is fine. I just like to separate it into three because three is a nice number to remember. So those are things that all phylum mollusca have, of course, except the bivalves and the radula story. We'll get to that later. Um, phylum mollusca can be now further divided into actual groups of clades, groups of organisms, and there are going to be three major clades that we'll cover in the next video.